now, the Charlie's Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Big Board Friday. Sponsored by Ralphie's Food, Sports, Fun. By Marsha's Homemade Buckeyes. From our kitchen to yours since 1984. And by PT Link Physical Therapy. Feel the difference and get relief now. Now, here's Jordan Strack. Welcome into Charlie's Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Big Board Friday. We have taken the show on the road once again, and we are in Bloomdale tonight, which of course is the home of the Elmwood Royals. We will continue to make our way around Northwest Ohio throughout this basketball season. Remember, no Lucas County teams playing games tonight because of orders from the health department. All right, let's get this show started tonight with a game that we were at. Elmwood welcoming in the Genoa Comets, and this is maybe my favorite intro of all of Northwest Ohio. I love that. All right, what a game this thing was early on. Trevor Wasserman for Genoa, hard to the rack, the bucket plus a foul. We'll hear from him more in just a moment. Other end for the Royals, a great night for Bryce Reynolds, the junior, trying to will his team to victory. Game by 22 points for him. But back the other way comes Genoa. Jacob Emerson, the best player on the floor for the Comets side. He had 18. Strong take here, switches to the left hand. But this game goes to overtime and then double overtime. Final seconds, the freshman phenom, Cade Lentz, quiet all night, but shows up here to the bucket. Elwood has a one point lead, but just keep this play rolling. Watch Wasserman. I said you'd hear from him. The senior, coast to coast, an incredibly tough shot. Genoa leads by one. So six seconds left. The freshman, Lentz, wants the game on his shoulders. He drives, but it would not fall. Genoa wins in double overtime, 59-58. It was one heck of a fight. We knew when we came in here, we, it wouldn't be easy. This is a hard place to play, even with Corona. So a lot of people stepped up. Zach Burrow hit a three. Jake, always good. It was just, it was one heck of a night. You know, the guys uh, really showed some grit and some toughness. You know, double overtime games, you know, those that's why we play these games, right? Um, you know, I got a good senior group. I thought they really, you know, let us down the stretch there um, and made some big plays when we really needed them. All right, let's head to Tiffin, where Columbia is hosting conference rival Sandusky. Remember, Columbia made that deep run in football. Hold on, do the same thing in basketball. Third quarter of this one, Tornadoes with a seven point lead. Logan Beeson, he was the quarterback, drills a three and made it a 10 point game. But fourth quarter, Blue Streaks making a run. Jaron Alexander all the way in to the paint, dishes it off to Davion Henry. Sandusky's only down three, but Columbia stays the course. Beeson to Jaden Myers. Columbia wins at home, 73-62, and John Monk has more. Jordan, Coach Kim told me that this is the first time Tiffin Columbian has beaten Sandusky in six years. And for the senior squad, it's extra special because they never even beat them in junior high. And I'm so excited for them. I thought we came out the gate outstanding. Um, we threw the first punch and, and Sandusky responded, credit to them. Uh, but we just kept competing at a high level and, and really responded all night. And keep them off the offensive glass and hustle, that's about it. I'll rebound them and we win. That's a huge win, man. We have not beat this program in like 2,200 some days. We were talking about it. They get the best of us every year. And they came in our place tonight and we executed a good game plan. They're a great team and that's a huge team win. We did a great job there getting stops. Um, we struggled to keep the ball to the paint a little bit there in the second, third quarter. We did a better job of that in the fourth. Uh, finished with the rebound and I thought we were outstanding executing on the offensive end of really being patient, knowing we had the lead and had the ball, we could get whatever we wanted. Tiffin Columbia moves on to 2-0 for the season. Reporting from Tiffin, I'm John Monk, WTOL 11. John, thanks. Clyde Flyers welcoming in over the Flyers. That's Caden Berger with his parents. First quarter of this one, Brady Wilson swipes a vermilion pass, takes it all the way down the court. He would dish it to Shane Holman who lays it up and in for two. Later for the Flyers, some great ball movement. Holman feeds Caden Berger. Behind the arc, drains a three. Clyde wins big over Vermillion, 66 to 46. On to the BVC, Van Buren making the trip to Liberty. Benton, always a tough place to play. LB led by 17 at the half and kept it rolling here. Alex Dillon in the passing lane, takes it all by himself. Lays it up and in for an easy bucket, and the Eagles rolling in this one. Van Buren trying to hang around. Good ball movement here. Trey Rampy kicks it out to Hudson Sendelbach. Buries a triple from the corner. Knights trying to climb back in this thing, but LB just too tough. Connor Boyd finds a curling. Ben Spies pulls up with a little floater, gets that to fall. Liberty Benton wins at 84 to 49. 
Staying in the BBC, McComb making the trip to the Hive, taking on the Hornets from Corey Rawson. Hornets getting it done early on the defensive end. Grant Bacon comes up with the steal, does a great job, tiptoe on the sideline, takes it in for the easy bucket. Corey Rawson up early. McComb doing their best to stay in this thing. Grant Dishong fires a three from the top of the key. It won't go, but there's Camden Glasser. A nifty little put back. The Panthers right in this thing, but just too much from the Hornets. Great ball movement. Matthew White, great look wide open. Kevon Lee lays it up and in. Hornets win it 52 36. Archbold starting their season on the road against the Ayersville Pilots. Blue Streaks moving the ball nicely, and not just that guy. They create space for DJ Newman. He knocks it down a corner three ball there for Archbold. And Ayersville has some size down low. Missed a little mid-range jumper here, but they would keep it alive with the offensive rebound. The senior, Callan Brown, gets the put back to go for the Pilots. And Archbold would respond quickly, though. A little perimeter shooting here. This time, Kobe Kennedy in the corner with a hand in his face. Gets a three ball to fall. Archbold gets their win in their first game of the year, 47 to 39. Arch er, Old Fort was really good last year. This year, hoping to keep it going, taking out a Fremont St. Joe. Second quarter, check out this ball movement. Get it over to the wing for Luke Snyder. He would bury a deep ball. Stockaders up big. And then later, again, some good passing. Landon Barr driving the dish down low to Garrett Havens. He floats it up and in for two. And then check out this shot from Havens. It's off the mark, but it's tipped around. Ends up in the hands of Colin Nutter. Rises and slams it home. Old Fort wins it big over Fremont St. Joe, 72 to 47. All right, Holgate welcoming in the Kaleido Wildcats to their home floor. Holgate. Moving the ball around to get some open looks. The freshman Xavier McCord fires a rocket across the baseline to Abe Kelly, who gets a floater to fall there for the Tigers. And then more from the freshman McCord. Catches the pass and doesn't hesitate to pull the three. Knocks it down despite some tough defense in front of him. But Kaleida is a tough team to score against. They would force a miss here on one end and turn it into offense on the other end. A long pass. Justin Siebenack connects to Okay, takes the contact and gets the and one to go. Holgate falls to Kaleida, 53-36. In our last high school game of the night, Ottawa Glendorf making the trip to Elida. The Titans came out firing from deep in this one. Carson Fuca to Brennan Blevins. He would connect for three. And then more from Fuca as he finds Will Kaufman who drives for a tough bucket. OG wins easy in this one, 77-29. All right, it is time for our first break, but when we come back, we are hitting the ice. The BGSU hockey team entering the weekend at number 16 in America. They were in action at home tonight. We'll have those highlights and more when we return on Charlie's Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Big Board Friday.